There are always going to be people in UKIP who say un unkind things, but from my side, I, I bear no animus. Um, people will say things and uh, accuse me of all sorts of things, I'm sure, but I allow people to define themselves by what they say, and I hope people will define me by what I say. I, I wish them all well. Anyone who was part of the Leave campaign, anyone who was amongst those 17 and a half million people on June the 23rd, I, I, I'm not going to criticise or say unkind things about. But this allegation that you were never UKIP and that you were in there to somehow undermine the party? Well, some people say that I was never UKIP. I'm not sure what they mean by that. Do they mean that I had a habit of winning elections? Do they mean that I had a habit of being upbeat and optimistic and, and focused on the, the hyper-local? Um, you know, I, I, I plead guilty to optimism. I plead guilty to winning elections. I plead guilty to focusing on local issues as a constituency member of parliament. But the idea that somehow I was doing something underhand and with subterfuge is, is a nonsense. When I joined UKIP, I called a press conference in London and said very clearly that UKIP and Euroscepticism needed to be upbeat and positive. When I won the Clacton by-election, I gave a speech which said that Euroscepticism to win had to be for all Britain and all Britons, first and second generation as much as every other. And I think the way in which Vote Leave won the campaign with that broad, generous, um, attractive kind of Euroscepticism vindicates that, 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 that call. You seem to be alluding there to the, the more radical anti-immigration policies, which you have been uncomfortable with. Is that correct? It's always been my view that we should take back control of immigration. And once Parliament gets to decide the number of people who can come in using the uh, uh, kind of visa system that they have in Australia and elsewhere, um, you know, once we have democratic control, we can legitimise the system and we can have a, a sensible conversation about how many should come and on what terms. Um, when that happens, I would argue that actually we need an immigration system that, that, that works for the, the economy um, and, uh, you know, works for, for the country. And I, I think it's about time that we had that mature way of controlling immigration, but I'm not anti-immigration per se. So no by-election, though? No. When I made the switch from the Conservatives to UKIP, I insisted on having a by-election. In fact, I was the first Member of Parliament, I think, in 30-something years to insist upon, upon that. Um, but I'm not switching parties. I'm not crossing the floor. I'm not going from the opposition to the government side or from the government side to the opposition side. I am what I was fundamentally elected to do, there to represent Clacton. But if you believe you have a mandate and you believe that people in Clacton support you, why not give them a by-election? What are you so afraid of? I, I'm not afraid of by-elections at all. I, I rather enjoy them. Um, in fact, I, I like them so often I, I called one when I made the switch. But look, I think one or two of the people who are now saying we have to have a by-election may also be the same voices that were saying why is he calling a by-election when I made the switch. You know, there are one or two people who will disagree with me whatever I do. But of, of all the members of parliament that there are, you know, sometimes MPs are accused for acting in their self-interest. I don't think what I've done over the past two, two and a half years can be, can be attributed to self-interest. This is about getting us out of the European Union. Job done. Let's be happy. Let's celebrate it. Let's go live now to our political correspondent, Michael Crick. Michael. Yes, well, UKIP have lost their only MP, but uh, I don't think there'll be that many people in UKIP who'll be too upset to see Mr Carswell go. There was due to be a meeting of the party's national executive on Monday, at which it's quite likely there would have been calls for him to be suspended or even expelled. The relationship between Mr Carswell and the party has been uneasy ever since he was uh, elected UKIP's first MP in Clacton a couple of years ago. He and Nigel Farage didn't agree on uh, immigration. Uh, it, uh, it was even alleged that Mr Carswell had joined the party in order to reduce Mr Farage's influence, particularly in the referendum campaign, where they both joined separate Brexit camps. And more recently, it's been said that Mr Carswell blocked Nigel Farage uh, getting a knighthood. All this has occurred on a day when, across Europe, people have been celebrating the 60th birthday of the European Union, including here in London, where there were pro-Remainers out on the march. This report from Ased Beg. His departure was celebrated as fondly as his arrival by the Farage camp, ending this love affair once and for all. However, Douglas Carswell's opponents inside UKIP are optimistic, despite losing their one and only MP. 
I think it's cleaner, and I think in terms of the, the reasons that Carswell came into the party in the first place have now, have now gone, and I think that does, as I say, release a lot of the poison that built up within the party. And as I say, I think our kind of fraction, if you like, were spot on right. With Theresa May set to trigger Article 50 on Wednesday, some are calling the party's purpose into question. At the moment, I see little point in them. Um, you've got, if you like, the liberal wing, such as it is, has basically left with Douglas Carswell. And, and then you look at Theresa May and the Conservatives now. So getting rid of all the anti-climate change legislation, uh, dealing with uh, cutting the state, shrinking the size of our National Health Service, pulling us out of Europe at all costs. You kind of think UKIP don't really need to exist anymore. Theresa May is the leader of UKIP. UKIP may have lost their voice in Parliament, but the UK is still leaving the European Union. However, that hasn't stopped thousands turning out today to show their opposition. They may have lost the referendum, but that hasn't stopped these people trying to stop Brexit. I think that most of the arguments the referendum was based upon and the Leave side have been shown to be rubbish. They've been shown to be, uh, they've all been thrown aside, apart from the immigration issue, which is now the issue, which I really oppose because I think the free movement of people is a wonderful thing. I'm not saying that the people who voted out are ignorant at all. What I'm saying is it was a vote of ignorance because no one knew. You know, all this rubbish about 30, £350 million pounds on the side of buses, which is just patently wrong. The rallying cry for the European project was echoed by EU leaders today who celebrated the 60th anniversary of the Treaty of Rome, the EU's founding document. We, the humble heirs to these greats, are gathered once again in this very same room. We do so solemnly renew our vows and reaffirm our commitment to our undivided and indivisible union. But Juncker's vision of ever closer union is under attack on all fronts. On the inside, there's disagreement with some EU leaders on how to move forward. And on the outside, there's a rise of anti-EU parties. See here, Rome's Mayor Virginia Raggi from the Eurosceptic Five Star Party greeting leaders as they arrive. And on the streets just below them, protesters banging the drum for reform. As leaders sign a new declaration, protesters in Warsaw, Brussels and Berlin are trying to keep the European dream alive. Well, the, uh, the interesting question now is what, whether anybody will follow Mr. Carswell out of the party. It's uh, interesting that a couple of his closest friends, Suzanne Evans, the deputy chairman, and Mark Reckless, don't appear to have commented this afternoon. There's also a question as to whether the party will carry on getting more than £200,000 a year in parliamentary research money, the so-called short money that it uh, qualified for by having Mr Carswell as an MP. Indeed, it's hard to see where UKIP does get another MP, especially after the failure of Paul Nuttall to win the Stoke by-election. And in, of course, in a couple of years' time, they will lose their 20 or so MEPs because we're leaving the European Union.